It was a day in the life, a normal day. It was a very normal day. I had a box waiting for me downstairs, a product to review. It was a day in the life of an audio reviewer. Yours truly, the audiophiliac. And I'm here to tell you my method, the way I review audio gear. People have asked me, what do you do? Is there a set routine? That sort of thing. I haven't done it because I don't know that there's enough there to, <laughs> to fill a video, but I'm gonna try right now. Let's, let's see how this goes. So the box is there waiting for me. I haul it upstairs. I have a box cutter, zip it open. I'm not going to show you all this stuff because it's just silly. You've seen boxes before, right? So I have a box cutter. I open it up. It's the new Shit Ragnarok 2. I'm actually pretty excited because I'm a fan of Shit products in general, and I like the original Ragnarok. So here it is a few years later, the new improved version. Open the box, put it on a stand, get acquainted, touch it, feel it, feel those knobs, feel the switches. Get the lay of the land. That's, that's the beginning of any audio review is um, figuring it out. Now, one of the things I don't like doing, one of the worst things to me when I'm writing review, worse, is having to read the owner's manual. That's not a good sign, because I think I've done this long enough. I should be able to figure it out without any help from an owner's manual. But sometimes I have to. And uh, did I for this one? I don't think so. No, probably not. I did because there was one thing that bugged me. So I, I you know, I put the, uh, the Ragnarok on a stand, I'm hooking it up to cables, I'm getting, figuring it out. And one of the things I do, I didn't do it initially, but I did it a few hours later, is I hooked it up. It's an integrated amp. It has preamp outputs, and I hooked it up to a, a, the shit Agir as an external power amp. And I hook it all up, turn it on, no sound. That I don't like. I don't like when... I've actually done my job right of hooking things up properly, and I don't get sound. That's bad. So I'm scratching my head, I'm looking around, rechecking the cables, everything's hooked up right, no sound. So at that point, since it's also, the Ragnarok 2 is also a hell of a headphone amplifier, I hook up some headphones, which I hadn't done up to this point. Hook up some headphones just to make sure the signal's going through. Hook it up, yeah, there's signal. And then I noticed when I unplugged the headphone, uh, headphones, there was signal coming out of the speakers. And I thought, that's weird, because I have the headphone output selected, but I have sound coming out of the speakers going through the Agir power amp. It's weird. So I turned off the headphone output, sound goes off from the Agir and therefore the speakers. Hook up, the, put, press the speaker output, no sound. So at this point, I'm exchanging emails with uh, Jason Stoddard from SHIT, and he's saying he gives me some reason why they did that that way. And I was like, this is really weird. And I wouldn't have figured it out, and it isn't in the owner's manual. I actually had to exchange it of why this is so. He gave me some dopey reason. And by the way, this isn't a review of the, <laughs> of the SHIT Ragnarok 2. This is sort of my working method, and I'm taking you inside the method, right? So anyway, that was kind of weird. So anyway, I'm listening with mostly without the separate amp, just the power amp within the Ragnarok 2 and I like the sound and I'm feeling the switches I'm getting the lay of the land and liking what I hear I'm using um, mostly uh, Kef LS50s as the speakers but also the uh, Klipsch 4T3s those are the two speakers that I'm using and lots of headphones so uh, things are moving along I like it and by the way I tend to use the recordings that I've been listening to lately. Because I got them in my head, I kind of got a feel for their sound through whatever it was I was doing recently, and then it's in the new thing that I am reviewing. That's part of the way I do it. I do have certain recordings that I, I don't like using the same things all the time, it's too boring, but I would use a lot of Chesky recordings, the Audiophile record label Chesky, because I've <clears throat> been present at most of the sessions, so I really know what those recordings sound like. So I'll throw in a chess or two to listen to and make some judgments there. So I'm taking notes, I'm playing different music, I'm making sure everything works, and going through the features of the product. In this case, integrated amplifiers aren't that heavy with features, but they, they do have features. In this case, the headphone output, the speaker output, um, just their ergonomics with the buttons and stuff to make sure they work was it's not the best but it's it's certainly not awful uh unlike the original ragnarok though the new one has 
a, a, a remote control. First one did. That's kind of weird. But anyway, um, this one does. It's really nice, solid metal remote control. That's a point up. So things that jump out uh, that are not the norm. Most of it, it's $1,500 integrated amp. Most $1,500 integrated amps have plastic remotes. This one has a metal remote. That's a point, right? So there's always those kind of things. Um, any problems, any hum, any noise, any weird things happening, I'm, I'm definitely on the lookout for that. And the other thing I'm looking for is where this product was made. Now, this shit, like most, like all shits as far as I know, is made in the USA, in California. That's also a point since most things are made in Asia or China or something, right? So that's something that will go in the review. Uh, warranties, if it's something unusual about the warranty, how how long it is, in this case, five years, definitely above average. That's going to go into the review. So things that are not the norm are worthy of including in the review. Things that are normal, like having a volume control, I don't mention that because it's sort of obvious, right? I, I, it kind of bugs me when I read other people's reviews where they, they talk about the obvious things that, you could look at the picture, you know it's got stuff. You don't, you don't need to have the reviewer tell you all those things. I don't think so. Um, but that's kind of the way, that's what I'm doing. That's my method is, first of all, <laughs> you know, it's funny that some people have said to me, friends and people, can I hang out with you when you're working and doing a review? And I was like, no, eh, not really. <laughs> first of all, it'd be really boring because it's mostly me thinking. Yes, I'm listening to music and taking notes. It's, it's kind of like watching paint dry. It's, I don't think the process would be fun for other people and it would be distracting to have, a, have other people present because I'd be thinking about are they bored or it's it's just not going to work it has to, it's a solo experience doing reviews and even when my wife is here sometimes that she can be sometimes distracting uh, so the, the more alone I am when I write a review the more inside my head the better <laughs> but my wife, Robin, has been present through many, many, many reviews that I've written. I've written so many. I've been doing this for over 20 years as a professional reviewer. That is, I make my living writing reviews. I, it's not, I'm not also a law professor who does this on the side. This is my job, writing reviews. And over the last couple of years, doing YouTube videos, which I also make a living from now. So that's my job, professional audio reviewer. <laughs> Impressive, right? Don't be jealous, uh, please. Uh, I think being on the other side as an audio consumer, which I was for most of my life, is, is, is also a lot of fun and a hell of a lot less work. So um, everything is a balance. And believe me, I'm not complaining. I love my work. I'm happy to have this job. Few people, uh, certainly in the United States that I'm aware of, make their sole living as audio reviewers. There's a lot of people who write reviews, but they have real jobs, and that's a good thing. I, I shouldn't say real jobs, they have actual real jobs, right? Anyway, now you know. Now you've been inside the audiophiliac's head, and now you'd be happy to get out of my head and move on with your day. So, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I don't mention this at this point, this order usually, but if you like what I do, follow me on Twitter, because the Twitter, the tweets, have stuff other than stuff about me. It has uh, stuff I'm telling you about friends, posts, and other cool things that I've discovered don't fit into these videos or other things I do. So follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. And if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, share them, blah, 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 blah. And if you really like what I do, check out the Patreon, which can be found at PAT. R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.